turn it into dancing low Take a broken vessel, put it back together, Lord You can take the scars and turn them into something beautiful Every moment you have mended, that's just what your goodness does you make all things, all things new. You make all things beautiful. Jesus, you rose again, defeated death, and now I live. You make all Shining like the break of day Cutting through the silence I can hear the sound of change Things that have been buried You are resurrected here again Every prayer you have remembered True to all your promises Come on! You made all things all things is new. Come on, sing it out to Him. You make all things beautiful. Oh, yes, you do. Jesus, you rose again, defeated dead, and now I live. You make all things, all things new. All things new. There's so much going on in our nation today. And uh, some of you, you might be overwhelmed by what's going on. But as we continue to worship right now, and as we sing these songs, I pray that you get overwhelmed by his presence, get overwhelmed with his peace. And so right now, as we set the atmosphere of worship, just take away any distractions you may have around you, wherever you're tuning in from. And let these words, these lyrics, speak life and truth, whatever you're doing. Let's worship.
For the Spirit of the Lord is here. Come on, sing it. The atmosphere is changing now. For the Spirit of the Lord is here. The evidence is all around. For the Spirit of the Lord is here. Overflow in this place. Fill our hearts with your love. Your love surrounds us. You're the reason we came to encounter your love. Your love surrounds us. Fear is changing now. For the spirit of the Lord is yes, The evidence is all around. For the spirit of the Lord is here. Oh, the atmosphere, the atmosphere is changing. Sean, nice. We need. 
And I will love you, Lord, my 
name is Jesus. And we lift His name on high. Hey church, let me pray for us. Would you lift your hands where you are? Oh Jesus, we lift your name up. No greater name than the name of Jesus. And we declare over our lives, over our homes, over our cities, God, and over this nation and the nations of the world, that you are the King of kings, that you are the Lord of lords, that you are the Prince of peace, God, and that you are the hope of our hearts. You are the hope of our hearts, Jesus. And so we just tell you today that we love you. We love you, Jesus. We magnify you, Jesus, over everything, over every situation and circumstance in our own lives, God. We know that you love us. We know that you care for us, God. But right now we're choosing to lift up the mighty name of Jesus, the name that carries all power. It's the name of Jesus. And so we just want to say, God, that we love you. Where does my help come from? My help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. It's my Jesus, and I give you all praise and all glory. And all of God's people said, Amen. 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 Would you just give him praise where you are? Wow, what a great time of worship. Wow, His presence is really here, and I'm sure it's wherever you are, in your car, in your house right now. I'm sure you can feel the presence of God. But hey, if you haven't seen me before, my name is Kate, and I'm just so glad that you've tuned in for today's service. It's going to be amazing, and I really pray that God encounters you. And uh, hey, we're going to continue to worship by taking up our tithes and our offerings. And you'll see on the screen so many different ways to give. You can scan the QR code, you can direct debit, there's Gcash, a whole lot of other ways to give. But hey, at Favor, we really believe in giving out of conviction and not compulsion. We want to give to God cheerfully today, amen? Well, hey, why don't I pray as we give? God, I just thank you so much, Lord, for every peso that's given to you right now, Lord. And we really pray, God that it would supernaturally multiply and that we'd see your kingdom, God, expanded across the earth, God. I thank you, Lord, for the generosity of your people, of every marriage and, and, uh, and family, God, and even every business, Lord, that's giving to you right now, Lord. Pour out your blessing and favor on their lives. In Jesus' mighty name we said... Amen. Hey, like I said, I'm so glad that you've tuned in. If this is your first time ever and this is your first favor service, hey, could you just let us know by whatever platform you're on, just commenting, hey, I'm new. Put the emoticon with the hand raised. Do the little love heart. Maybe don't do the love heart. Everybody's probably doing that. Do something that says, I'm new. This is my first time. And one of our team would love to get back to you. There's also a link there, uh, the new people's form. You can just click on that. Let us know. We would love to hear your story. I get to know you a little bit more and we'll call you sometime this week. But hey, if you're in Metro Manila, we actually have a new people's pack that we're going to send some of our team out this week. And uh, it's all safely done. We've done it for the past few weeks and we're actually going to be delivering it to your house if you're in Metro Manila. And there's some goodies inside of that. And we'll do that very carefully. We'll wear our shields and our masks and make sure we have gloves on. But we want to get that to you just for coming online line today. We're so happy that you're here. And in just a moment, my husband's going to share a great word, but there's always so much happening in the life of our church. So why don't we check out Favor News? What's up, Favor fam? We hope you're well and safe this season. We have a couple of great and fresh announcements coming your way, so let's get started. What an incredible Easter weekend we had. We loved worshiping with you on our Good Friday Presence Night, which you can re-watch and listen to anytime, anywhere on our YouTube channel. Also, we had an amazing Easter service. If you want to revisit our creative items from the service, you can catch them in 4K on our YouTube channel. 
Hey, favorite girls! We have an exciting online gathering planned for next Saturday, April 17, from 2 to 4 p.m. The heart of Favor Girl is that we'd be a community of ladies from all ages, seasons, and walks of life. So for the next gathering, we'll be celebrating just that. For more announcements on how to RSVP, just stay updated by following Favor Girl on Instagram. Take care, ladies! This Sunday at Favor Kids, we're starting a brand new series called Dive In. We'll be diving into God's Word and His beautiful creation under the sea. Join us as we look at Peter's life and what it means to follow Jesus. Catch a new episode every Sunday at 10 a.m. on the Favor Kids TV YouTube channel. Calling all high schoolers in the house, Favor Youth is up and running in this season. We've got youth services happening every Friday, youth connect groups during the week, and online hangouts via Discord. Join us for our youth services live every Friday at 6.30 p.m. via Facebook and Kumu. And then join us for the after party on Discord at tinyurl.com slash Discord. Don't go through this season alone. Hey there, young adults. We've got something special happening for you after every service with Favor Movement Online Hangouts. Hop onto our Discord server at tinyurl.com slash Discord where you'll find lots of games, activities, and fun conversations. This is a great chance to meet some of our young adults and make new friends. So whether you're new to Favor or you've been wanting to get plugged into community, this is your chance. I'll see you there. It's been a crazy few weeks back in lockdown here in Metro Manila, with people losing their jobs, dealing with sicknesses, and unable to go to work. So we've actively been serving local communities by providing relief goods and other assistance through our community community care program. Because of your giving, we were able to serve over 600 families in the last two weeks. Thank you, Favor Church, for your generosity. Hey, are you fascinated by the behind-the-scenes clips from your favorite movies? You know, I still geek out over those till now. Well, we just launched something similar like that on Instagram. One of the core values we have as a church is creativity. We value creativity so much that we put in the effort to grow in it and to share what we've been doing and how we do it to help other creatives. If you want to see what happens behind the scenes, the production, graphics, film, social media, photos, what happens before we roll and after we say cut, then follow our Instagram page, Favorite Creatives, that's dedicated to everything creative at Favorite Church. Aside from this service, we've got services happening for kids, high school students, and one with Filipino Sign Language interpretation. If you want to know when or where else these services are happening, join a connect group or find out more about our church and what else we're doing in this season, then visit our website, favor.church, or follow the social media channels coming up on your screens right now. We can't wait to meet again as a church. That's it for Favor News. Hey, it's great to have you uh, tuning in with us today here on Favor Church Online. Uh, we are recording from our studio because we're still in the middle of our government uh, lockdown. In fact, we're pre-recording this a couple of days before Sunday, and so we're not sure yet what's happening in the next week, uh, but we're praying uh, for you. We're praying with you, believing that God would just uh, encounter you wherever you're out, wherever you're at today. You know, I want to preach a message today. I was really praying about what to share I want to preach a message really into the heart of our church here in the Philippines. I know every week we have people from uh, around uh, Asia and around the world, in fact, watch our services and, and even people that would call themselves a part of our church around the world. And we really love you. We appreciate uh, that you're a part of our family. But uh, as I was praying for this week, I really felt God impress strongly on my heart to preach a message directly into where the majority of our church is located here in Metro Manila in the Philippines and to speak into uh, what's kind of been happening in the last month of our country in particular. It's been going on obviously for over a year with COVID and lockdowns and all that kind of stuff, but really what's been happening in the last month. The, the title of my message today is, My Hope is Running Out. It's, uh, you know, it's been a real tough month. Obviously, it's been a tough year, but a real tough month. In the last month here in the Philippines, cases have increased dramatically to the point where we've been forced into a lockdown. Many deaths have increased as well. And 
A lot of people now either know someone who's died or, or know someone's relative who's passed away. It's the answer of the vaccine that we're all waiting for just seems to be kind of far off and not really accessible for all 110 million people that live here in our nation. You know, with the lockdown comes the, the affected businesses. With that, I've got many friends who own restaurants whose produce and all their food has just been non-accessible in the last couple of weeks and they had to wipe off uh, thousands, tens of thousands of pesos worth of stock just because of the lockdown. Mental health issues are skyrocketing. Skyrocketing from the youngest of kids who've been forced to live inside their homes all year to even uh, the eldest of seniors who are still forced to be inside of their homes. Mental health is just rising, the issues skyrocketing in our nation at the moment. Kids' education is being affected because they haven't been allowed to sit in a classroom with a teacher and socialize with those around them. People are losing trust and they're losing faith in the leaders that are supposed to provide answers, but they don't seem to be providing any answers. Now, this is one of the most depressing starts to a sermon maybe you've heard, and I'm not here to try and pile on the bad news because if you know me, you know that in the midst of any storm, there's always an answer, and that answer is Jesus. And today, the answer to my sermon is Jesus. But before we get to that answer, I want to do something that maybe we don't do often in church, and it's this, acknowledge how tough it is. Because so many times in church, we over-spiritualize stuff. We say, hey, everything's bad, but Jesus is the answer. Jesus is the key. Quickly, trust in Jesus. Run to Jesus. And we're like, I, I want to run to Jesus, but I can't. Because I don't know how. I, I've got nothing left in me. I, I don't know what else I can do in this situation. And the title of my message today is how many Christians are feeling in our nation, let alone people that don't know Jesus. And as Christians, as believers in Christ, we are called to be the light to the world, a beacon of hope. And how do we actually be a beacon of hope if we feel like we have no more hope left? Secular hope is when you put your, your trust and your hope in things that will most likely fail at some point. When you put your hope in things like money, in your career, in people, in friends, in the government, in promotions, in social media, those things are going to fail us at some point. In fact, all those things have failed us at some point in the last year. Paul describes what life is like without God in the book of Ephesians. He said in Ephesians chapter 2, verse 12, Remember that you were at that time separated from Christ, alienated from the commonwealth of Israel and strangers to the covenants of promise. And here it is, ready? Having no hope and without God in the world. For those that don't know God, really, we don't have hope. Putting our hope in the temporal things and the worldly things it is not really hope. It's more of a I'm wishing that it's going to work rather than a grounded hope. A biblical hope, on the other hand, is grounded in a divine person and in the work that he accomplished for you and I, the believer. Let's read who this hope is in 1 Peter chapter 1. This is how Peter describes it. It says in verse 3, Praise be to God the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. In his great mercy, he has given us new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead and into an inheritance that can never perish, spoil, or fade. This inheritance is kept in heaven for you. Look at what Peter is declaring here, that we have been born again, and we are now born into this new state, into a living hope, and this hope is not dead. It's not stale. It's not stagnant. It's not wishful thinking. It is alive, and how is it alive? It's alive through the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Last week, this is what I preached. 
the power of the resurrection. It was the resurrection that changed it all for all of mankind, for all of human history. It wasn't just the life of Jesus. It wasn't just his teachings or how he loved people, but it was his resurrection that proved his power, that proved his claim that he was the son of God. And as we look through the eyes, through the lens of the resurrection, we see a living hope, an inheritance that Peter says will never spoil and will never fade. This living hope will never let us down it's the exact opposite of our human hope that we put hope into when we look through the eyes of the resurrection of Jesus we can see his power in being our living hope what he has accomplished through his death and his resurrection that gives us hope and everything we now hope for is seen through the lens of his resurrection but help me because my hope is still running out. Everywhere I look, all I see is despair. What do I do? Well, the spiritual answer is run to Jesus. I have no hope. What should I do? Run to Jesus. Run to the cross. And if the majority of us were honest, we would probably hear that answer and be like, okay, okay, I'll run to the cross. And we still wouldn't know what that really looks like. What, what does it really look like to run to Jesus in a season where there's so much hopelessness, where, there, where we're surrounded by despair and negative news and, and there's nothing good on the horizon? What does it look like in 2021 in the middle of a global pandemic that the Philippines is reeling from right now? What does it look like to run to Jesus? How can we grow this hope in our life and not run out of hope, but be overflowing with hope, be a beacon of hope, a light to this world? Let's talk about it. Here's a couple thoughts I have. Number one is this, is that hope is not passive. Hope is not passive. Some people mistake hope in the Lord as sitting around waiting for him to do what we are hoping that he will do. This is not called hope. This is called wishing. Where we sit and we just wish God would do something. God, just take away the virus. God, let the vaccine come. God, let the economy, we just, we just wish that it would happen, but we sit there and we do nothing to actually help it happen. I found that in my life and in my experience that when it comes to God doing things, he always partners with us. He partners with people to be his hands and his feet. God uses people to get things done, to change things. When Jesus died, all the disciples, we read about it last week, they all lost hope. But when they saw him resurrected, their hope was restored, and then they did something about it. They didn't just sit there and go, well, Jesus, you're back. Take over again. No, because they knew that his call wasn't to stay with them. So the disciples got up off their butts, got out of the locked doors that they were afraid of the Jewish leaders. So they locked themselves in houses and they began to do what Jesus had taught them to do. They were living in the same circumstances, under the same oppression, yet the resurrection of Jesus had put inside of them a hope that they could bring change to this world for the glory of God. Hope can be lost and turned to despair very quickly. And everywhere we look right now in our great nation, it seems like we are surrounded by despair. This week, we've lost loved ones in our church, people that are loved. They're now with Jesus, which is a celebration that they're with our Savior, but it's still tough for those that are left behind. There's been mothers and fathers this week. People have been greatly affected by this sickness. There's so much despair. But I don't want to live in despair because there's enough people living in despair. And as a Christ follower, I've called to be different from those that are in the world. Because what does my despair lead to? My despair leads to death. It leads to negativity. It leads to me getting on Facebook and just ranting 
And let me just give you a spoiler alert. No one's changed the world by getting on Facebook and ranting. That hasn't changed anything whatsoever. I've been called as a follower of Jesus, as a believer in the resurrected Savior to be a beacon of hope. And hope does never ignore the situation, but it constantly finds Jesus in every situation. Hope is not passive, but it's active as we become the hands and the feet of Jesus. Hope asks this question, how can I turn this despair into hope? And you may not have to change the world, but you can start by changing your world. Some of our young adults did this uh, this week. It's really cool. One of our guys in our church, he's a much loved member of our church, has COVID and lives uh, in a situation where it's pretty tough for him to actually get some food and, and he's got to be in lockdown and he's doing okay physically, but he can't go out. And in the middle of ECQ, trying to order food and grab and all this kind of stuff, it, you know, it, it's just not, not easy at the moment. And so uh, one of the guys in the church, one of the friends in, in his church got together and got a whole bunch of friends together from within our community. They all put in money and they all went and bought a whole bunch of groceries for this guy, delivered it to his door, put it at the front, and, and then they went and hid in their cars, and, and they filmed it, of course, because if you didn't film it, it didn't happen. And, uh, and he came out, and, and he grabbed the food, and he was so overwhelmed, overwhelmed by the love and the care of just his community, his fellow believers. It's not that big of a deal, but... When you begin to look at your world around you and see the despair and begin to ask, how can I change this despair into hope? It's a great question, but be careful of the question because God might just answer you. And I found that a lot of times you are actually a big part of the answer of turning despair into hope. Our young adults in the favor movement uh, went last week feeding people over, I think, 300 families. They were able, 600, was it 600? Over 600 families they were able to feed that didn't have access to food in the middle of the lock time. Families that were full of despair all of a sudden because some people took a risk in a really tough season where you're supposed to stay at home. And yes, we're not irresponsible. We're safe. We're everything. Thing, but you, when you are driven by a living hope, you will put your own safety at risk to bring hope to those that are currently hopeless. Let the despair around you motivate us to become beacons of hope. So what can I do practically? Well, pray for people. Send meals to those that need it right now. And I know I'm talking directly in our situation. Send vitamins to people. If you have much, give to those that don't have much. Wash your hands. Wear a mask. Fight this virus together. We need to be the living hope of Jesus in a world full of despair right now. And talking about not being passive. The Lord's really been challenging me the last few months and especially in these last couple of weeks, God's really been challenging me on how we can bring hope in such a way that affects a nation. One of the biggest challenges that I've seen as I've talked to a lot of the people within our church community and seeing people's responses online and how they're dealing and how they're struggling in this season is it's been really demoralizing to, to people's hope, the response of maybe some of our political leaders in this season. Where we're looking for people to bring answers and to bring solutions, there really hasn't. There's, there hasn't been a lot of answers. There hasn't been a lot of solutions. And this has been going on for over a year. And sometimes that can really just drain a person. Here's the thing. I'm not getting political in what I'm saying. I'm not taking sides. That's not my role as a pastor to take sides. My side is Jesus. That's the side that I, I take. I'm not for or against a political party, but this is what God has been challenging me more than ever, particularly in the last three weeks is this, is to begin to actively raise up godly men and women to serve in the field of politics here in the Philippines. And I'm not just talking about raising up a president one day, because if you want true change, it's actually not about the president. It's about the secretary in the local it's about the local counselor in your barangay. 
It's about the, the, the chief of staff of the mayor of your local government. It's about the mayor. It's about the congressman and their staff. It's about the senator and it's about the president and, and the department of immigration and foreign affairs and all these different things. And God has been putting a conviction on my heart to actually begin to intentionally raise up people with a political viewpoint in mind that they would come and infect the politics of this nation with the Holy Spirit, with His wisdom, and with the integrity of God. Because there is nothing that kills hope faster than corruption. I have sat and I've talked with loved ones who with tears in their eyes have poured out the heart and said to me, why should I do the right thing when everybody else does the wrong thing and seems to get rewarded for it? It's demoralizing. It brings despair, corruption. Proverbs 29, verse 2, it says, When the righteous thrive, the people rejoice. But when the wicked rule, the people groan. The Lord is calling our church, not just favor church, but the church in the Philippines to rise up and be intentional about praying in, raising up, training people to go into significant roles and significant positions in every area of government in this nation. Is it possible to change the corruption in this nation? Yes. Why? Because with God, nothing is impossible. You might be there going, yeah, okay, but wow, it's pretty big. <laughs> Corruption's ingrained. People have told me that, and I've grown up here. I'm a white Filipino, I know. It's ingrained. It's, accept it's almost accepted a part of the culture of the Philippines. But is it possible? Yeah, it is. Why? Because of God, and also I'm, I'm seeing it begin to happen. The local city that I live in here in Metro Manila, the mayor of the city is a born-again Christian. And he changed the procurement process in the city so that people wouldn't get any more personal kickbacks. SOP, just give me money, I'll give you the thing. He just, he just, he just changed it so that it was actually the legal way to do it. And you know what happened? That city saved 1.2 billion pesos which is over 20 million US dollars just by doing the right thing. And in the middle of the pandemic, they were able to supply 138,000 children that were forced to stay at home and do school online with gadgets that enabled them to do school online because they had this extra money by actually just doing the right thing and doing their job well. This gives me hope that we can see this type of thing that happened in this city happen in more of the cities, more of the regions, in our Congress, in our Senate, and in our president's role. We can believe, we can pray, but don't just sit down and wish for it to happen. Do something. Get involved. Run for your local council. Start to speak. Don't just get involved with the same corruption that happens because it's a poison that is ruining our nation. I am believing for the day that we would see Public servants actually do what their role is, serve the public and not just get into politics just to get rich. And I'm seeing it already. There is godly men and godly women rising up to serve this public, but we need it. We need it in this nation. And I'm not being political. I'm desperate for my children to see this nation become the pearl of the Orient, like it was once known as. To not be bullied by other countries. To not be the last one on the vaccine list because we couldn't get it together. But to actually have from the local barangay to the office of the president people. And you know what, here's the thing. You can actually be not corrupt and also not be a Christian. I'm not trying to get every person in, in the house and in the Senate to be a Christian, it's not about that. But if there's enough people that would live with integrity, we can begin to change things here. The despair I see motivates my hope. It motivates. I see, I look around, I see the religious spirit in this country. 
a country that knows so much about God, yet so many people have never encountered who God really is. And when I see that, I'm so full of despair. I'm so full of despair of people sitting in church and worshiping a God they've never encountered. But I don't just sit there wishing that it would change. I'm doing something about it. I'm trying to bring Jesus into our nation. I'm trying to help along with the thousands of other churches in this great nation to bring Jesus in so that we would encounter the real Christ. What can you do? What can you do? What areas maybe have you been passive in wishing that something would change where maybe God needs you to stand up and be a beacon of hope for change in your community, in your family, in your barangay, in your city? What can you do to be a beacon of hope? Don't be passive, but let your hope reflect the living hope of Jesus. Let it be alive and let it be active. So what else can we do to renew and strengthen our hope? Because maybe it's on low battery right now, our hope. What what else can we do? Well, my second and my last point is this, is that we can pray. You know, as I said earlier, the disciples, when Jesus was crucified, they lost all hope. They scattered. Last week I read about how they were full of fear. They, They scattered everywhere. But when they saw the resurrection, resurrected Jesus, their hope was renewed, but their situation was still the same. In Acts chapter 1, Jesus gave them their last words to his followers to wait here. The gift, the power, the spirit was coming to be upon them, but the Jewish leaders were still angry with them. There was still a lot of fear in that environment. So what did they do? In Acts 1 verse 12, this is what the disciples did. They returned to Jerusalem from the Mount called Olivet, which is near Jerusalem, a Sabbath day journey away. And when they entered, they went up to the upper room where they were staying and all the disciples are there. In verse 14, it says, all these with one accord were devoting themselves to prayer together with the women and Mary, the mother of Jesus and his brothers. What did the disciples do the moment that Jesus gave his last words and was taken up into heaven in front of their eyes? Do you know what they did? They went back to the room where they had the last supper with Jesus and they went up there and they began to pray. And if you know how the story goes, they prayed for so many days that in Acts chapter 2, the power of the Holy Spirit fell on that room and fell on each person in that place like tongues of fire and they spilled out of this room and people were there wondering what was going on and Peter it says in Acts chapter 2 full of the Holy Spirit stood up and began to preach and the New Testament church was birthed that day as 3,000 people got saved and baptized why because the disciples decided to pray they didn't go and get depressed that Jesus had gone again Oh, he's gone again. He died then came back to life and now he's gone. The anxiety of this emotional roller coaster of Christ. No, you know what they did? They went and they prayed. Church, we need to pray. We need to pray like we've never prayed before for this nation. We need to pray. We need to pray against this virus. We need to pray for our leaders. We need to pray for wisdom. We need to pray for our economy. If you have a Christian family, you need to gather your family together and you need to pray. If you have Christians at work, maybe before you start the day or when you end the day, just gather them together and begin to pray. Listen to me, I'm not talking about praying for Africa. I'm not talking about praying for this or that. I'm talking about pray for our nation right now pray for what we are going through right now as a nation because we need to pray we need God's miraculous working Holy Ghost power filled prayer we need God to come through and God will only come through as we pray as we come before him humbly and cry out to him with humble hearts we need to pray for our frontliners the nurses and the doctors who are out there every day risking their life for us we need to pray we need to pray we need to pray it was as the disciples pray that God poured out his spirit and changed the world James 5 13 it says is anyone among you in trouble ha! let them pray 
Our country's in trouble. James tells us, pray. You're in trouble right now? Pray. You sick right now? Pray. You got someone sick next to you? Pray. We need to pray. We need to pray. We need to pray. And as you pray, as you get into the presence of God, your hope that was running out, the low battery that was on your hope, I promise you, you'll begin to see it rise as you spend time in prayer and in his presence. Paul challenges us in Philippians 4 with one of the most challenging statements in the Bible. He says, do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your requests to God. What a challenge. We kind of just roll that off as a cute little Bible verse. Don't be anxious, but just pray. But really, if, if you allow the challenge that Paul puts down to really come and begin to affect you, he's saying right now, right now, whoever's watching me right now, you're anxious about your finances. Stop being anxious and begin to pray. Bring that before God and let God give you peace. You're anxious about being sick in your body. Right now, let that go and go to God. Let him come. Let him come and begin to give you a peace. Paul writes elsewhere in the Bible that God's peace will come and we can't even fully understand or comprehend it, but it will guard our hearts and it will guard our minds. We need to pray and as we pray, we will see hope begin to rise and why do we need that because our country needs the living hope of Jesus and you 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 are the living hope of Jesus you are the hope so be a beacon of hope be a lighthouse that shines in the darkness of what our nation is going through right now. We need Christians to rise and not add to the despair, but be beacons of hope. But James, people are dying. I know, it sucks, it's hard, it's not right. But I have something else to hold on. I'm not gonna hold on to my money. I'm not gonna hold on even to the doctors. I'm not even gonna hold on to the government. I'm gonna hold on to my God, my living hope. And your family and your friends and your community and this city and your nation needs you to hold on to God and to carry this hope out. So right now, let's pray. Wherever you are, pray. Join with me, pray. Let's pray for our nation. If you're from outside of the Philippines, I, I ask you, join with us and pray for our nation just for a moment because we need it. We need it here. We need to pray. God, right now we come before you. We pray for our nation. Lord, we need, God, we need solutions. We need breakthroughs, God. Lord, we pray right now for wisdom. We pray for our leaders, Lord God. Whatever decisions they've made in the past, God, we pray that you would just, God, throw wisdom upon them, Lord, that they would hear from heaven, not even realizing it's from heaven, but hear from God, Lord, and bring solutions. We pray that if there's any corruption that is standing in the way of us beginning to see improvement in this nation, that that corruption would be brought from the darkness where it's grown and brought into the light God that that corruption would die that it would die that it would not be fed anymore and that people with integrity whether they're Christians or not would begin to stand up and serve the public serve the public serve our nation stand up for what is right for what is just God we need a miracle with this virus God oh by the power of Jesus we declare let this virus go let it leave our nation heal people who are sick right now those that are on death's door God heal them wake them up put life into their bones right now we know you can do it God we have faith we have hope because of the resurrected Jesus oh we need you God we need you God we need you we humble ourselves and we pray for our nation and we need you
We need you. Obviously, everything else hasn't worked so far. We just need you. We need you. For our children, God, come. Protect their minds. For our teenagers struggling with mental health and adults struggling, come, God. Come and protect their minds. Let there be a peace that comes and guards their minds and guards their hearts. God, we need you. We need you. We need you. We need you. In a hopeless world, you are the living hope. We need you. We need you. We need you. We need you. We need need to pray. If you believe in Jesus, you need to pray. Just this week, we had a a Zoom prayer meeting. And and our church gathered a couple hundred people together just to pray for this. And we're going to do it again this week. We'll put it online. And we'll do it again this week because I really feel compelled and convicted to pray. To pray. To pray. If you feel like getting on Facebook and complaining, take a moment and pray. Pray as long as you complain. Don't ignore the situation. But remember, you are a beacon of hope, a carrier of hope. Maybe you're watching this and you actually don't have the living hope because you don't have a relationship with Jesus. You know, when Jesus died on the cross, we celebrated Easter last week. He was paying a price that you and I deserve. We've all sinned. Sin is really rebellion against God and the way that he wants us to live and how to live Maybe you don't know Jesus. Maybe you've never come to the point where you've asked him to forgive you of your sin, to come into your life. Come and be your Lord and your Savior. If you're watching, you've never made that decision. Right now, I'd love you just to put your hand on your heart, and I'm going to pray a prayer. It's a prayer reflecting what the Apostle Paul wrote in Romans chapter 10 in, in the Bible when he said that if you confess with your mouth and believe in your heart that Jesus is Lord, you will be saved. And right now, I know there's people watching, and you're going to pray this prayer and make this decision. So right now, if that's you, you want this living hope, this hope that that we can hold on to in times of despair, pray this prayer with me. Say, dear Lord Jesus, I come to you right now. I ask you to forgive me of my sin. I believe that you died on the cross, but you defeated death, and you rose victorious. So right now I ask, Please come into my life. Be my Lord and Savior. Be my living hope. In your wonderful name I pray. Amen. Amen. You know, if you prayed that prayer, that's the greatest decision that you'll ever make in your life. And I want to congratulate you. And we want to actually come alongside you just as a church and really help you in that decision. The Christian walk, it's not meant to be done alone at all. And so please either scan that QR code text that phone number or follow the link in whatever device that you're watching on or whatever it is. We'd love to connect with you and really help you in that journey. Hey, church, uh, you know, I know that today's message, especially if you're outside of the Philippines, thank you for watching, for praying with us and really felt convicted just to speak into our house and into our church. Don't let despair get you down. Don't just see all the negativity. Don't just see. We just celebrated seven days ago the resurrection of Jesus. That is our living hope. That gives us hope in the middle of this situation, that even though things may look bad, we can be the hope. So don't wish, don't just sit and wish, but stand up and let the hope, the living hope, be outworked through your hands as we live for Jesus. Amen? Amen. Hey, we love you. Thank you for being with us today at church. Uh, If it is your first time, please let us know. Again, we'd love to connect with you. We've got connect groups as well that are running all over the city, and they're online and a whole bunch of different things. Uh, Look out for our prayer meeting that we'll have this week. We'll do it on one of the nights just from 6 till 7. Uh, We'll we'll just gather and pray just on Zoom, really pray for our nation. We love you. God bless you. Be a beacon of hope in Jesus' name.